Joseph, there's some big changes coming in from the building code at the moment in regards to commercial duct testing. Let's go through those. It is a very welcoming development in the National Construction Code for the 2019 version. Duct air leakage testing has been introduced to the Australian standard 4254.2 in 2012. But in the past, the building code um, explicitly exempt the need for testing because back then, maybe because the industry hasn't been developed sufficiently, mm -hmm. not as many testers available. Mm -hmm. But the new version of building code, which will be in enforcement in May 1st, 2019, has made some adjustment. One of them is dark air leakage testing requirement in the Australian standard will be part of the new building code. So what size of ductwork needs to be tested? Well, in the new construction code, it requires any system over 3,000 litres per second be tested for leakage in accordance with AS4254. However, it only applies to air conditioning ducts, including heating and cooling. Mm. If a system is only there for ventilation or extraction, it does not um, cover it. Okay, Joseph, let's go to the warehouse and check out some of the duct testers that we use. So Joseph, what's the percentage of ductwork that needs to be tested on a site and what size ductwork can we test? Well, it really depends on what standard you're following. There is a couple of different standards available. You can follow the NIP standard, the DW143 or the European standard. But typically, we just try to follow the Australian standard AS4254. Um, the allowable leakage percentage is 5% of flow and you need to test at least 10% of each type of the ductwork in your system. Traditionally, most of the duct testing equipment that people using in the industry, they handle up to 200 liters per machine. So if you got system bigger than 4,000 liters per second, you may need to use either multiple machine or you need to break the system down into smaller sections. But for us, we have some more advanced equipment that can handle much larger ductwork. It's the same size as the blower door equipment that we use to pressurize the entire building. So we can handle much larger system. We can do the whole system at one go, which reduces the potential inaccuracy in the temporary blanking. And we can have one leakage number for the whole system. How leaky are metal ducts on commercial buildings that you've seen? Well, it's a very wide range. For some very good quality installer with stringent testing and checking regime, QA regime, they can get down to as low as 3%. But typically, we are talking about between 8 and 15% leakage in a more normal setting. But in some extreme cases, it can go about 35%. Wow, and what's building code require? According to the Australian standard, um, AS4254, the requirement is 5% leakage. And what's usually the leakage rate for riser liners or speed wall risers? For those masonry or builder riser, so to speak, they don't really have a standard dictating what level of leakage is required. But it can cause havoc if it's in, not done in right. In some extreme cases, we work on a couple of the masonry risers. The system is very simple. It's a garbage room exhaust riser, one inlet, one outlet on the roof. Within a 25-story building, we got zero fold, zero pressure down at the garbage room. So it's more than 100% leakage. What does it mean to have a percentage of leakage in ductwork? Leakage in ductwork it's not as straightforward as a lot of other wastage because the energy requirement for generating the airflow is following a cube rule, which means a 5% increase in airflow would translate to 17% increase in fan energy. A 10% increase would be a 37%. In some of the worst case, if your ductwork is leaking at 35%, you are using an extra 140% of energy on top of the original design energy. So it's a huge implication in terms of fan energy requirement. In addition to that, 
is not only you wasted 35% of your conditioned air, it also mess up with your control because you don't know where the conditioned air leaked to. In some cases, it may leak to the return air directly, which mess up with all the sensing and control system because the thermostat inside the room may tell you you need more cooling, but the return air temperature sensor in your chiller, in your air handling unit, tells the system it's already cold enough. So you got conflicting signals from the same system and a lot of the control system, they just don't know what to do in those kind of cases. So it can have a very huge um, energy implication. In addition to that, depends on where are the duct work, what kind of building, especially for places like laboratory, hospital, or even day procedure centers. Leaky duct work can lead to a lot of problems about um, contamination, spread of disease, uh, pathogens, and sometimes if the duct work um, if you don't have a good moisture control and you've got leaky duct work into some rises, you may have mold issue and the return air may just keep drawing in spore and distribute it across your building. For all your duct testing, riser testing and even plenum testing needs, we have all the equipment and the experience to do that, this sort of air tightness testing. Moving forward, if you have waited till very late to do your air tightness testing on your duct system for building code requirements, we have a solution that can potentially resolve issues of air tightness for systems that have already been installed and, and are not accessible for remediation.